Oh, right, I get this request all the time, and uh, I know I have a, a number of videos on here that address uh, this, but the thing is, I haven't done an update in quite some time. Uh, as many of you know, I'm transitioning from uh, proprietary software to free and open source, and um, so today I'm going to discuss getting high on Arch on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Alright, for starters, I'm using a Compaq CQ56 laptop as my main computer and a Kobe high definition television for uh, viewing it. I use um, XRander to shut off the monitor on my uh, laptop so that I can view uh, everything on the TV. I find that the first thing that goes on most notebook computers are the CCFL bulbs. So by having them shut off, I can expect longer life out of the monitor itself. Alright, and uh, as many of you know, I'm using Arch Linux. And the reason I chose Arch Linux is because um, it is a nice uh, lightweight operating system where you decide uh, what you want to build on top of it and it gives you exactly what you want nothing more nothing less I'm using the lightweight open box desktop nothing fancy just right click menus that sort of thing and I have all my applications installed here also I use uh, the Avant window navigator as my top panel with the Cardapio menu installed on this. And uh, this is particularly handy for when I am running my computer in Compiz mode. And you guys have seen my computer run in Compiz mode for ages, and I just don't, you know, I just lost my appeal for it. You know, the eye candy was great for a while it lasted, but. And I still use it sometimes, but not quite as often anymore because I'm doing so much more with Blender and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, other video editing and multimedia tasks and that sort of thing. And so it's just not necessary for me to have all that stuff running, especially because I'm only using one desktop for the most part. Now, as you can see, I have a number of accessories that I use regularly. I have Catfish, I have a character map installed here, a, a disk management uh, tool. Uh, I have the PC Man FM Lightweight File Manager for managing uh, all of my normal uh, file management. But then, if I want to manage my photos, for instance, uh, let me show you this. Uh, all I have to do is... Um, right click on a folder and just select to open that dolphin and then what will happen is uh, now uh, I can use dolphin here to manage uh, all of my uh, images photographs and that sort of thing here so I have a little bit of all of my favorite uh, distributions or uh, desktop environments I should say uh, thrown together and uh, mixed up in a nice little mishmash if you will and everything seems to coexist quite nicely. Um, let me get into my multimedia applications that I'm using uh, for the most part right now. In graphics, I'm using Blender. I have uh, a key monitor here that I can display for when I'm using Blender so that I can show what keystrokes are being done in my tutorials. I also have the uh, Make Human uh, 3D modeler installed for um, just testing purposes right now. I'm not really doing much with it. I'm still waiting for that project to grow. I use Mirage, which is a very fast uh, GTK image viewer for uh, looking at images when I really don't want to ed edit them. And then under Wine, I have Fireworks installed. I, I just can't seem to get my head wrapped around the GIMP. I 
you know and the thing is I've had this program for several years now and I just cannot divorce myself from it uh, I've got all kinds of plugins and all kinds of really neat tools and it just takes me a fourth of the time to do all my image editing in uh, fireworks than it would if I were to sit down and try and do this stuff manually in the GIMP so I'm still uh, quite tied to fireworks for the time being um, but eventually I will get my head around the GIMP and I will be getting rid of that. That's probably one of the very few pieces of proprietary software I have installed on the computer. And then of course I use the Firefox web browser and Deluge for my uh, BitTorrent client. I like it because uh, I, I, I have to have a BitTorrent client because many of the distributions you guys ask me to review are, uh, are available through BitTorrent and when they are I will download the BitTorrent because I tend to get faster download times using BitTorrent rather than uh, downloading them from uh, an FTP or HTTP server. I also use Mumble regularly. I use that every weekend of course for uh, the Linux Zoo Crew plus uh, I also pop in from time to time just to have a conversation. I have Skype installed as well for uh, doing some uh, screencasting, podcasting, and just keeping in touch with family and friends. And then, of course, I use XChat IRC for uh, communicating when I'm doing podcasting and, of course, pop in time to time. I also have Copete installed because I have some instant messaging accounts, but you know what? I think I've only used it once or twice since I've installed it. I might actually just pull the thing off because I'm just not the I am kind of guy. What can I say here? All right, and uh, I just have Abbey Word installed for Office here, and in sound and video, I have uh, Acetone ISO for managing my uh, ISO disk images that I have stored in archives. And that way, I can extract files if necessary. I use Audacity for uh, audio editing. GovC View is my webcam uh, where you're seeing me talk on the screen right now. Kadian Live is my um, primary video editor that I'm using. Uh, I am also starting to wrap my head around the Linux Multimedia Studio. This is Linux ans Linux's answer to Fruity Loops. That's what it is. FL Studio XXL. And so I have this uh, set up and I've been playing around with it. And uh, it is my understanding that it may actually use some of the plugins that I've used in FL Studio XXL. I just haven't had a chance to play with it. so. When I do find out, I will bring up a tutorial and I will show you how to use them. I also have OpenShot Video Editor as a backup video editor. Personally, this is a great utility for beginners, but you know, if you really want advanced video editing functions, you really want to use Kadian Live. I use Pythos for accessing um, music streaming services. I have Qt Gain for um, dragging and dropping audio files and it'll normalize them for me very quickly without having to open up Audacity and then of course XF Burn for burning my disks. Okay, and um, really not much all to really report. Uh, I have uh, BleachBit installed on the system for keeping the system clean um, and a bunch of other uh, small little utilities that rarely ever get looked at but they're here in case I need them for adjusting maybe some KDE settings because I have KDE applications installed I have GNOME applications installed I have uh, applications from all these other environments I want them to match so I have to have the configuration tools to make them uh, work pretty well for me and uh, let me see what else here I am using the Quake terminal and uh, let me go ahead and open up a new terminal here and uh, pretty much, uh, I don't know why it's telling me processor unknown presently on my uh, Archie here. And that's what you're seeing here. That's Archie. And it basically gives my system information. And basically what I did was I did some tweaking and meddling to get my Bash prompt to look pretty darn cool. I spend a lot of time in Bash. So uh, especially when I'm compiling things and trying out new software and new features, functions, and all that other stuff. So having, um, having a nice drop down by pressing a simple key on the keyboard is advantageous to me for uh, doing uh, my editing and that sort of thing. So pretty much uh, that's all there is. I mean, nothing too fancy. I got a very uh, small computer system here, uh, but uh, considering I'm using a lightweight operating system and the, the scope of this show, I'm able to do quite a bit with a laptop. Imagine that. 
And uh, there is another laptop that I am looking at. I'm still saving my coins. I got this giant little coin jar that I, every day uh, I collect, uh, you know, I take all my spare change out of my pocket, throw it in there and forget about it. And uh, I'm starting to get a little collection of coins building up. And once this bucket gets a little bit too heavy for me to carry, then uh, I'll go ahead, take them into the bank, cash in my coins and whatever money I have. And, of course, all the coffee shouts you guys are sending me. I haven't spent a dime of it. It's all sitting there, and it's just waiting until I have enough money to get that uh, quad-core laptop computer that I've been looking at. And who knows, uh, maybe by the time, uh, maybe there'll be even more cores available but by the time I have enough money saved up to uh, get that upgrade that I'm hoping to get in the near future. But pretty much uh, that's all there is to it right now for uh, what I'm running. And uh, when I do get a new computer, uh, absolutely, I'm going to actually uh, save all of my settings and everything, and I'm going to transfer Arch over to my new computer. I'll just have to go in and modify a few config files, and it'll be the exact same operating system uh, with, you know, uh, basically just install Arch, copy my home directory over, rewrite some config files, and pretty much I'm going to have the same exact operating system. Uh, Arch, what can I say? I absolutely love it. Um, sometimes uh, I'll have to, you know, I'll get a cut from an upgrade and, you know, you know, I've got a few band-aids in the back of my head here from uh, the last upgrade, but that's okay. You know, um, I, you know, uh, fig you know, it's easy to, for me to figure out how to fix those problems, usually because they're addressed on Arch's website, and it's just a matter of, uh, you know, changing some text in a config file to fix the problems. Well, that's all I have on my system. Thank you guys for requesting this. And I've got more videos headed in your way.